Liverpool pounds. So, Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis was the pseudonym for uh, a chap called Alan Radner, who he wrote a, a kind of handful of books, an odd selection that didn't really tie together. He did a, like a Dick Barton one in the 70s, the the tie-in for the baffling TV series Who Done It in the 70s quiz books using a microcomputer, things like that. Um, but I want to look at uh, some of his Richard Lewis books. There's one I'm not really going to feature in this because it doesn't kind of fit in the... Uh, it doesn't kind of fit with the rest of these books. That's Possessed um, from 1982, which, oddly enough, was... Uh, published under the name Alan Radner and some editions were published under the pseudonym Richard Lewis um, I think the uh, the future cover under the name Richard Lewis is better that's yeah just big green screaming face that's what you need so his first kind of insecty or arachnidy book let's get it right was published in 1978 and it's uh well, basically, Hamlin put out all of his uh, kind of killer insect books. I, I love 70s and 80s Hamlin horror books. They they seem to pick up where New English Library left off horror-wise a lot, uh, publishing some some pretty classy novels, horror novels, but a lot of kind of pulp B-movie type trash. That's not derogatory. I adore B movie pulp type trash. So I'm going to blurb some of his, uh, well, all the insecty books that Hamlin published. So the first one is Spiders from 1978. The Kentish countryside was bathed in golden autumn sunshine. All around lay peace and tranquility. Maybe it was too peaceful too ominously quiet, but who'd complain about that? Certainly not old Dan Mason, energetically tugging out weeds in his farmhouse garden. But what he'd uncovered there didn't alarm him, but it should have. For he'd just released a seething army of death. The ultimate terror erupts. These are, yeah, these are pretty much what you think they're gonna be. Um... There's, there's no, you get animal attack, well, insect attacks, you get gore. Uh, Mr. Radner couldn't write female characters, but you tend to find in 70s, late 70s, early 80s horror paperbacks, it's, it's, uh, it's just male heroes. It's, and in these books, a lot of the female characters are there to make coffee or fill up large uh, 70s-style tumblers of whiskey from 70s-style decanters, Um, and just basically there to ask questions which helps plot exposition as all the ladies in the novels have to have everything explained to them. Strong female leads weren't prevalent in these books, and Alan Radner is... (laughs) Is a fine exponent of uh, not really accepting that ladies could do cool stuff in novels. Okay, next was, in 1979, was Devil's Coach Horse, which uh, features a beautiful cover by Stephen Crisp. So the back cover of this one reads... It begins when a small charter plane crashes into the Alps. All the passengers are killed. A party of international scientists starting a lecture tour. But the doomed aircraft also carries live specimens. And as the insects escape their cages, they search out the warmest place of refuge they can find. Inside the human dead. When the frozen corpses are recovered for burial, They contain the seeds of the most horrifying natural scourge that has ever threatened Britain. By the time the disaster is recognised, it is almost too late. A bloodthirsty tide is sweeping across the country, and every human being faces hideous death. 
So, yeah, uh, apparently they like the warmth of human bodies, so they get in dead, frozen bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's it's a fun, gory romp, and any, any insect-y things. I love killer insects and arachnids. So, next up in uh, 1980 was Parasite. Yes, there's a skull on the cover. Skulls and snails. I, oh, 70s and 80s paperbacks with a photo of a skull on the cover. Just take my money. So this is Parasite. Chaos, insanity, death. When Peter Braddock planned the perfect crime, he never imagined the horror he was about to unleash on Britain. The circumstances were bizarre. The abandoned cruiser he'd spotted in the English Channel. The fearfully mutilated body in one of the cabins. The blood. But how could he ever guess what would happen if he boarded it? The stricken boat held a gruesome secret. Clinging to it and travelling with it were tiny carriers of a fearsome disease. Parasite. When the first cases were reported in France and Spain, the authorities refused to believe the evidence. The dreaded Bilharzia parasite couldn't be affecting Europe, could it? But when it reaches Britain, they have to face the truth. Irreversible madness and hideous death follow in the wake of this creeping terror, and it is soon a race against time to prevent the whole country from sinking into utter chaos. Then in 1981, Alan Radner returned to the Spiders. Um, so yeah, a sequel to Spiders with the web. So let's, let's blurb the web. New menace, unprecedented terror when the killer Spiders return. The web. It is six years since Britain was crippled by a monstrous onslaught of flesh-eating spiders. Now at last, life is back to normal, more or less. But Alan Mason's recurring nightmare is that the spiders will return. The web. Angus McInnes's grisly death is the first sign of a fresh tide of horror. For the spiders are on the move again infecting their victims with a deadly poison and no one knows where they will strike next. I'd probably have a little bit of a break in between reading uh, Spiders and the Web because they're largely very similar but wonderful. Uh, that's not a criticism. They just are. And then in... Uh, in 1983, he finished off his series of uh, kind of bizarre insect novels with Night Killers, a flesh-ripping horror creeping from the darkness. Um, again, these, these books are all very, very similar. Um, the only difference being Parasite, they spread a disease rather than actually attack you. So this is Night Killers. For 300 million years they'd existed unchanged. Furtive insects scuttling through the shadows till modern man began to destroy his environment. Then came the fateful night when a vicious murderer died before he could burn his latest victim. Ravenous cockroaches devour the corpse and develop a new craving for human flesh. Mutating into savagely efficient killers, they prey on the young, the old, the drunk, the injured, undetected, unstoppable. Eventually, two scientists guess the truth, but no one will believe them, until a chilling disaster strikes, and even then the night killers have an unexpected weapon. So yeah, you can you can kind of tend to pick up uh, a lot of Richard Lewis's books, fairly reasonably priced, and they are tremendous fun, and they're not going to challenge you. Basically, you can just rattle through them in a couple of nights. So if you fancy killer insects, bit of gore, uh, spiders does tend to have a weird dip in the middle. 
that I've I've never understood as a as a narrative structure. It it's kind of odd. Um, because okay, no mad spoilers, but it kind of makes out that everything's done and sorted. Uh, in the middle of the book, but you're holding the book, so you can see that you've got another half a book left to read. So you pretty, you know, you can say with some certainty that the spiders are going to come back. Anyway, yeah, if you fancy these, they're, they're fairly easy to find, uh, fairly reasonable to pick up. So yeah, go get yourself some spider fun. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.